Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I am going to be doing a lesson from Blossom and Root, A River of Voices History Curriculum. So I'm really, really excited you guys to finally show you how we utilize A River of Voices inside our homeschool. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I am a homeschooling mom to three girls ages 10, four, and two, and I'm in my third year of homeschool. So you guys, we started A River of Voices back in October, so we have been utilizing this curriculum now for about two months and I am really really enjoying a river of voices and I cannot wait to share with you how we actually utilize this curriculum it's a lot of moving parts and when I first got this guide I was a little bit overwhelmed by seeing all of the activities and all the things that you can possibly do with this history curriculum but once I started to use it and incorporate it in my homeschool I just found out how simple it was and I haven't seen that many videos on Blossom and Roots of River of Voices their early American history um, just on YouTube just showing and explaining how it works the flow and everything like that so I'm really excited about today's video to be sharing how we utilize a River of Voices in our homeschool how I keep it very very simple and sometimes I follow the minimalist plan and sometimes I do all the books in the book basket. So before we get into the DUA lesson, I will give you guys a brief flip through of the lesson we're going to be doing, the books we're going to be reading, and I'm going to show you all the uh, extras and all the things that A River of Voices from Blossom and Roots has to offer. Okay, you guys, this is Blossom and Roots, A River of Voices, United States History for Elementary and Middle Grades. This particular volume is actually going over the first European colonies to 1791. So you guys, this is not going to be like a full flip through of this curriculum. If you want me to make a separate video of a full flip through, I will. But I'm just going to show you how I utilize this curriculum and how easy it is to incorporate it in your homeschool. So uh, as far as scheduling goes, you can really pick and choose how you want to do this curriculum. I am doing the traditional schedule where we're going to be covering this over a 36 week period doing history twice a week. So um, she has something for everyone, you guys. She has portions where we can do oral narration, written narration, we can do scrapbooking, we can make a timeline. So it's so many different optional um, hands-on activities that we can incorporate in each week, or we can just keep it simple that week. So I really love that flexibility where uh, me as parent, I am picking and choosing how I am going to utilize this particular curriculum. So you guys, the main um, spines in this particular uh, curriculum that we are going to be using in the standard pathway, which is the pathway I'm going on in this curriculum, is Before Columbus. We're using A Kid's Guide to Native American History, A Kid's Guide to Latino History, and this is the last reference book, which is A Thousand and One Things Everyone Should Know About African American History. So these are the main spines we are actually getting the meat of our curriculum from. And then in each lesson, as we go through it, she has um, some book basket suggestions where we will incorporate our picture books. So you guys, I'm going to go ahead and flip to today's lesson that I'm going to be doing a lesson with you guys in um, just to show you what we're actually going to be accomplishing for um, today. So in today's lesson, we are actually going to be talking about Squanto. So here is the portions where I went ahead and I highlighted what we are going to do. So we are actually going to be utilizing our reference book before Columbus in this lesson. And we're going to be reading chapter five. And it's about why did the Europeans succeed for our picture book for this particular lesson? We are actually going to be using Squanto's Journey. I already had this picture book. We read it last year, so I think it will be a great reread for us to do. And as far as our visual uh, lesson that we're going to be using for today, I am going to be using the clickable links that she actually gives when you order her uh, downloadable PDF um, to go ahead and click some of the videos of my choosing. Um, she does suggest the parents to pre-screen the videos before allowing your kiddos to watch it just to make sure that um, the information uh, you feel that it's appropriate for your kiddos to watch. So um, we will be watching 
the captured video by 1614. And then we will uh, do the discussion question. Uh, we are going to skip the notebooking page for this week and we're just gonna do the discussion questions. But if you would like to do the notebooking pages, you can do the notebooking pages for each lesson. But again, the notebooking pages, um, they are optional. Uh, she does have like mapping and uh, different um, where you can draw pictures of whatever you talked about. They're really, really cool uh, notebooking pages. Sometimes we do them and sometimes we don't. I have another activity that we're gonna be doing at the end of this lesson. So we're going to just do the discussion question and kind of skip the notebooking page, but I do utilize them as well. So you guys, let me stop rambling and we're gonna go ahead and do this lesson. If you guys do wanna see a more flip through and in-depth view of uh, the River of Voices, just let me know in the comment section down below and I will make a separate video giving you guys like a flip through and my initial review of this curriculum. Okay, you guys, we are actually about to go ahead and start off our River of Voices lesson. We are actually on lesson six and we are going to be talking about Squanto today. So in a River of Voices curriculum, in the beginning, they suggest us to always start off our new lesson by watching uh, one or several of the clickable video links that they have for the standard pathway. So I picked out one of the videos. This is just a two minute short video we're gonna be watching. This video is called Captured 1614. So we're gonna kickstart by watching this quick video and then we are gonna go ahead and listen to Before Columbus and we're gonna read our book basket book today, which is Quanto's Journey. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start off our uh, video today. How people lived in land over the winter and in the spring a new year. And the earth woke up and new life came from the plants and animals and birds in the trees. They moved to the coast. The doctor men passed the machine into the harbor and fish. The women planted and tended their garden and the children played on the beach. And... The same story appears over and over again in history books about the European conquest of the Americas. Time after time, a small group of Europeans defeated a much larger population of Native Americans. Why did the Europeans always win? Okay, you guys, I just wanted to let you know that we have been utilizing Audible a lot when it comes to us studying history. I'm finding that it's so helpful for uh, me to use Audible, especially as we are in the Indigenous People and Native American Unit. Um, it really is helping us get a better understanding and we're not so focused on the pronunciation of these tribes and of the names of the group. We really can understand and grasp the knowledge um, in this book before Columbus and it's really really, really been a great addition to our homeschool, adding in Audible. Is my story is both strange and true. I was born in the year of the English call 1590. My family were leaders of the Patuxent people and I too was raised to lead. But in 1614, I was taken to Spain against my will. Not you guys, this is my favorite part of the curriculum when we get an opportunity to choose one of the books from the book baskets. All of the selections are so great and sometimes I cannot just choose one, um, but I do my best to try to at least choose one or two. I also have been really enjoying the discussion questions uh, that I'm having with my daughter. Um, I really love hearing her opinions and her views on history and I love creating this safe space where she can vocalize her opinions and um, I really, really have been enjoying this portion of this curriculum. Okay, you guys, we are actually all done with the lesson. We actually listened to Before Columbus. We read Squanto's Journey and we did the discussion question with Brielle. We watched our video. And right now we're actually gonna work on one of the bigger projects for this first part. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to do like most of the other big projects. So today Brielle is going to be making her own longhouse. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the materials that we picked up from the Dollar Tree and we're just gonna watch her uh, try to construct this longhouse. And I'm really, really excited about this okay you guys this right here is my American history visual encyclopedia and I just have a reference point of a longhouse for Bria to kind of like look at as she is trying to construct her own but we went to the Dollar Tree and we found this cute little tray that could be like her base for her longhouse and then let me see Bri what else do you have 
I got some moss. We got some moss from the Dollar Tree and some fake wood. We have some fake sticks from the Dollar okay. Tree and then what else we have? Popsicle sticks. And we also have some popsicle sticks. So uh, this week I'm just going to let Brielle take her time and kind of construct her own type of longhouse and kind of see how it goes. I'm going to give her a few days on this project because um, I just want her to take her time and kind of like have fun in making this um, longhouse. And we might watch a few more YouTube videos about more structure of long houses and things like that um as she is making her own little mini model so are you excited Bree? Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> this one's really really cool so i'm gonna go ahead and let her get started So you guys, I know you're going to ask me the question, how long do we actually spend on a River of Voices history curriculum? And we spend anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Today, Brielle actually spent a lot longer because we kind of went on this rabbit trail on longhouses and I thought she was going to spend a few days on this longhouse, but she just kept on asking more and more questions and she was constructing her longhouse. My time lapse actually stopped as she was doing it, but this is her final product and I really, really have been enjoying the hands-on approach to this history curriculum as well. Okay, you guys, I really hope you enjoy watching me and Brielle do a lesson from Blossom and Roots, A River of Voices. I really, really, really have been enjoying this curriculum. I love the discussion. I love all the books that we're reading and incorporating in our homeschool. Um, I just love the laid back approach of this curriculum because we can really, you know, go all in one week or we can just really keep it simple. I love that flexibility that it offers. Um, I am so, so, so enjoying just hearing all of these different perspectives and using all of this great living literature to study history. Um, it's really been great. Um, all I, I don't have anything negative to say about this curriculum. Like I am in love. I really feel like I'm past the honeymoon phase and I really, really have been thoroughly enjoying it. And I really love this approach to history that I am going on with my daughter. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really hope you enjoy watching us do uh, this lesson. And I really hope you are enjoying coming more inside of my homeschool and kind of seeing how we are utilizing our curriculum and how we're utilizing all the resources um, for this school year. So you guys, thank you so much again for watching today's video. I appreciate every single one of you and I will see everybody in my next one. Bye.